Good morning. Um, today we're talking about unit rates with fractions. Last year you used unit rates all the time to find out the speed of cars or to find out how much something was per ounce or per pound. We're doing the same thing except sometimes in those unit rates we have fractions. So we're going to practice using fractions in our unit rates today. Make sure you have these notes above where that line is that says notes right up here. Please write your name so you don't lose these. Um, today, just don't forget that a unit rate, I'm going to type it in because my handwriting on this mouse pad is not good, um, a unit, I'm going to capitalize the whole thing just so you can see better, a unit rate is a rate with a denominator of one. So every time we want to find out how much one thing is, that's called a unit rate. Here's an example from last year. Um, if we went 64 miles in two gallons, and I wanted to find out how far we could go on one gallon, we kind of used a little bit of the carrot method, if you will. So what did I have to do to the two to get it down to one? Well, I would divide that by two, correct? And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top in a proportional relationship, and I would get 30 two miles. Okay, make sure you have that. But I also want to show you something else. I could have just divided these two because it's a fraction. And the fraction bar again means to divide. So I could have just done 64 divided by 2. And I want to show you one more thing. If I did 64 divided by 2, Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, which in this case would be 1 half. If I multiply 64 by 1 half, isn't that really 64 over 1? And if I multiply it straight across, I'd get 64 over 2. Oh, we're right back to where we were before, and that's 32 over 1. My point, though, is dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Keep that in mind today as we work through these fractions. If you don't have this yet, make sure you pause the video. I'm going to scroll down, which means, obviously, it erases. Okay, I'm going to scroll right on down here. So remember, and I'm going to type this in because writing on this is tough. Remember, <clears throat> I'm going to cancel that out, sorry. Multiplying, oops, sorry, back it up, dividing by, oops, my spelling is not good, by a fraction simply means multiplying by its reciprocal. Make sure you have that. Dividing by a fraction simply means multiplying by its reciprocal. And make sure you have this again because I have to scroll down so we can see this entire page. My screen is not very big. We're going to try a practice problem and we're going to compute unit rates. So here's our question today. Benjamin read one-fourth of a page in his book in one-third of a minute. How long will it take him to read one page? Well, we've given you some steps because sometimes when we read, it's overwhelming, especially with fractions. So let's just listen to what the directions say here. It says highlight the two units in the problem. Well, let's do it. Take your highlighter or your marker and highlight the important information here and the units. When we talk about units, we mean what do they mean? So we're talking about pages and we're talking about minutes. Okay, we did that. Number one, done. Well, let's just say we did that. <clears throat> Second one says identify the per one unit and place this in the denominator of your ratio. I'm going to use a different color. We want to know one page. So that's what we have to put in the denominator. <clears throat> so let's start with this. We know we have one third of a minute and one fourth of a page. So the one fourth goes on the bottom. So I have one third and I'm going to actually write this and one-fourth 
And actually, let's to the side on the left, let's just get into a better habit of we're going to write the units over here so we don't ever forget what we're placing where. Okay. Okay, so we identified the per one unit. We placed that in the denominator. Great. <clears throat> now divide. Okay, now you, I know you have calculators, but we also need to be able to do it without a calculator because you don't always have calculators on you, and this is not a hard problem. So this really means one-third divided by one-fourth. I hope you're writing this with me, which really means multiply by the reciprocal. And when I say that, this is nothing new for you. What it means is keep change flip. Remember that? Oops, oh my gosh, ignore that. Obviously it's not 4 over 3, it's 4 over 1. I'm already thinking about what the answer will be. So this is 4 thirds because when I multiply straight across I get 4 over 3. Now I can leave it that way or I can simplify it and 3 goes into 4 once with a remainder of 1 over the denominator stays the same over 1 third. I'm not done because it says write this unit as a complete sentence. Now, I don't always expect you to do that, but it's good practice. I do always expect you to label because it has to have meaning in these story stories. So it says, how long will it take him to read one page? Well, how long? Oh, we're talking about minutes here. So it will take him one and one third minutes Per page. And that is not hard. Now, since you do have a calculator, would you now go back and just type in one third divided by one fourth and check to make sure we did it correctly? I'm going to pause the video. You should pause the video right here. I'm going to scroll down. So on the back side of this sheet are some practice problems and we definitely need to practice this because it looks scary and it's not and because you have a calculator it's going to help but for these problems please don't use a calculator so in this problem we have three fourths divided by five ninths now keep in mind this is not a story problem so there really aren't any units given but i want you to keep in mind that we're still dividing this means divide and you are going to multiply Div dividing by fractions really means, remember what it means, multiplying by its reciprocal. So now we take 3 fourths, and instead of dividing by 5 ninths, we're going to multiply by 9 fifths. And if I multiply straight across, I get 27 twentieths. And you can leave it this way. There's nothing wrong with it. But if it does say to leave as a mixed number, 20 goes into 27 one time with a remainder of 7. And here's my denominator of 20. Okay, now we're going to scroll across, which means I'm going to lose my, my work here. Would you please go on and try numbers 2 and 3? We'll start with number 2, and then I'm going to show you the solution for it. Try it right now on your own. I'd like you to pause the video again right here so that you can make sure that your answers look like these. The solutions are right here. It took the dividing, changed it to multiplying by the reciprocal, and then the answer is given. So please make sure you have this on your paper. And I'm going to scroll on down to the word problems. And let me zoom out a little bit here. All right, Jorge ran four-fifths of a mile in one-sixth of an hour. At this rate, how many miles can he run in one hour? Okay, now we're talking about units here again. So do you remember our rules? Highlight the units and what we're working with. So we've got four-fifths of a mile in one-sixth of an hour. Now I'm going to go back through. Let me choose a different color highlighter. That'll be exciting. <laughs> We want to know about one hour. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable. So I'm going to choose a different color. And if we're talking about one hour, we're going to put the hours on the bottom. 
we are going to put the miles on the top. Please write this. Hopefully you can write it better than mine. So I have four-fifths of a mile on top. On the bottom, I have one-sixth of an hour. Okay, so this really means to multiply by the reciprocal. Go ahead and try that right now, and then I will show you the solution. So yours should look like this when you're all done. <clears throat> and you should have gotten that Jorge can run four and four-fifths miles in one hour. Hopefully you know how to do this now. I would like you to go on and try numbers two and three, pause the video, and then I'm going to show you the solutions. So here are the solutions for numbers two and three also. For Sue, Sue needs one and eight, one and one I'm sorry, one and one third cups of flour for one batch of cookies. Hopefully you have that. For number two, I'm going to scroll down. So if you um, struggled with that, make sure you pause it and get all the information down. Number two, for Crystal, Crystal can complete one quilt in three and three fourths hours. It will take 15 hours to complete four quilts. If you need practice, make sure you stay after school with us. And we are probably going to do an exit ticket on this soon, so make sure you get it. Get this all down.